Hey tech enthusiasts, welcome to the Max Voltage YouTube channel where we dive into the latest and greatest in technology and crypto. Today we're talking about Nvidia's new heavyweight champion of the world, the RTX 5090, specifically the physical design. How did they create the 5090 with 28% higher power, but in only a two slot design? Was it witchcraft? Magic? Yeah, probably magic. Spoiler alert, no, it isn't witchcraft or magic. Well, wait, maybe it's how they developed the 3D vapor chamber. Well, more on that later. Let's break it down. First off, let's talk about the board design. NVIDIA went all out on the PCB, and by that, I mean it's com compact, dense, and cutting edge, with a 14-layer PCB where power delivery is on both the front and back side of the board. This is an amazing work of engineering to fit so much on such a small board and still be able to cool the thing. Regarding the power connector, rumor had it that a new power connector might be coming out with this new card, but Nvidia did decide to stick with the same physical design. But what they did do was they rotated the power connector and placed it at an angle in order to reduce cable strain and limit the, po the possibility of a severe connector malfunction. One cool feature is how the IO and PCIe connectors are attached via ribbon cables. It's sleek, but it does raise a few questions about long-term durability. More on that later. Now let's talk about cooling because the RTX 5090 is bringing the heat with 575 watts of power, an increase of 125 watts over the RTX 4090, while also cooling the GPU in a two-slot card. This is what so many people are talking about. The thermal innovations on this GPU are just as impressive as the new Blackwell technology. The dual blow-through fan design is revolutionary and eliminates the need for the 90 degree airflow turn on the front fan, which not only improves acoustics, but also reduces pressure drop and boosts airflow. This means more efficient cooling and quieter operation. And the heatsink, mind blowing. NVIDIA's engineers made it concave with fins that are tighter near the edges where the airflow and the pressure are strongest. It's all about maximizing cooling efficiency while minimizing materials in areas with less airflow. The backplate also plays a role in cooling with fins to enhance passive heat dissipation, especially the backside power delivery components. Yes, you heard that correctly. There's backside power delivery components as well as front side. So this now has fins on the back, not just a piece of metal that, that helps cool it. So. Definitely some advancement there. But the biggest piece of tech innovation is the new 3D vapor chamber. This is the first ever 3D vapor chamber in a shipping product. There are 10 heat pipes? No, those are not heat pipes. Those are more correctly called vapor columns as they work differently than heat pipes. I won't go into all the geeky details, but this is the most significant tr contributor to the increased cooling capacity Let's not forget the cooling of the GPU die itself. The 5000 series is cooled using liquid metal. Yeah, liquid metal makes you kind of think, hmm, how are they doing this and making sure it's reliable? Well, NVIDIA's triple gasket system ensures the liquid metal stays in place while NVIDIA's manufacturing process ensures the precise amount and application of the liquid metal. The cold plate on the VP 3D vapor chamber is nickel plated to prevent any chemical reactions between the liquid metal and bare copper. So there is no liquid metal to bare copper um, interface. It's to a nickel plated cold plate. While NVIDIA did test the GPUs in all mounting orientations to make sure there were no reliability issues, this setup is most effective when the GPU is mounted horizontally as air flows more freely in a typical tower case, as well as the 3D vapor chamber with its horizontal vapor columns is most effective in this orientation. 
really only talking about a couple of degrees difference, but there is definitely a difference in performance. Keep this in mind when planning your new computer build. Another reason why I think the horizontal orientation is best is due to the fact that the liquid metal will have much less of a possibility of leaking past the triple gasket system. If it's in a vertical orientation, gravity could possibly have an effect over time. But with every innovation comes a few concerns and questions. First, the compact PCIe slot connector, PCBA, which is connected to the main board via a ribbon cable, can it really handle the weight of the card over time? It doesn't have the leverage of the bigger PCB anymore. It's just basically two times the size of the PCIe connector. It's really small. So we've seen GPU sag before, and while this card is lighter, that small PCB might need extra support. And what about maintenance? Cleaning off liquid metal is no joke. Special procedures are required to avoid conductivity issues. And let's be honest, repasting using liquid metal despite the triple gasket system isn't for the faint of heart. What if you over apply the liquid metal? Well, you could face a gasket failure and then GPU failure. Nobody wants that with a $2,000 or $2,000 plus for the AIBs uh, GPU. Nobody wants to see their GPU fail. There's also speculation about NVIDIA nerfing AI and mining performance in order to protect this card for gamers. Well, I've heard of this on the 5090D. Personally, I'm skeptical. NVIDIA recently announced their drivers are now open source. So the idea of performance throttling seems unlikely. So is the RTX 5090 a game chamber? In my humble opinion, absolutely. From its dense PCB design to its cutting edge cooling system, this card screams innovation. But as always, it's not without its quirks and concerns. If you're the kind of person who likes to tinker, such as applying a water block, just be prepared for a steeper learning curve or maybe choose one of the AIB models instead that have a more typical cooling solution. And let's not forget the price tag at $2,000 or there will be ones that are higher priced from the AIBs. While this is lower than what many thought the price would be, including myself, it is still quite the investment. And AIB GPU prices have not yet been announced as of the making of this video. But hey, cutting edge tech doesn't come cheap. And, you know, everybody does have two kidneys, so you could give up one. So what do you think about the RTX 5090? Are you ready to upgrade or are you waiting to see what AMD has up its sleeve? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more tech and crypto. Until next time, keep it cool.